In March of 2011, Megan Hunt embarked on a globe-trotting journey that spanned three continents. The Seychelles, South Africa, Egypt, Turkey, Italy. Last September, Megan decided to stay in the U.S. for the winter and accepted a job as a line cook at a ski resort in Taos, New Mexico. I loved my job, and it was great because I lived at the bottom of the hill. I would hike in a lot of the times. One morning in March, while getting ready to go to work, she found herself in a life-or-death situation. I hear her rumbling, and I looked out the window. I saw snow and trees coming at me at a very alarming rate. It was just instinct to take a deep breath. And then next thing I know, I wake up and I'm underneath the snow. Megan didn't realize it at the time, but an avalanche had hit her cabin and buried her under eight feet of snow. Even as she struggled for air, Megan did everything she could to call for help. You've got to scream for everything you're worth. And luckily, I have a loud voice, but to travel through eight feet of snow, it takes quite a bit. I screamed and I screamed and I screamed. One of her roommates, along with local rescue crews, started frantically searching for Megan. I started panicking at some point, and I was like, Megan, like, you have to stay calm. Like, if you start panicking, you're going to pass out before you help can get to you, kind of. And I remember thinking, you know, this isn't how I want to die. Megan says she passed out, but after 20 minutes of digging, a breakthrough. Mm. And mm. Megan joins us this morning. So happy that you're, you're here. You're able to join. First of all, how are you doing today? I'm alive. Yes. <laughs> There's a win. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. a start. Um, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling stronger. Like, I've started PT. Um, so, like, physically, I'm not as strong as I was before the avalanche, but mentally and emotionally, like, mm. I'm getting back there, too. I mean, this, this is the thing of nightmares. I mean, people yeah. have dreams of being buried alive, basically. There was this little pocket of air that you, you could breathe just the way things collapsed in around you. Yeah. W was that what saved your life? Um, that's what ski patrol and rescue workers think because um, because the way that the wall fell on my face, like, it gave me an air pocket so I could breathe and so that I could survive and I could scream. I was just about to ask you, there are some people who would panic. In that moment, you at least you had the presence of mind to try to scream. You know what I mean? Yeah. I knew that if I didn't, like, it was all over for me. Mm -hmm. And so when I did my last scream, too, I was like, you know, you're about to pass out. This way the they, on they can at least find your body, like, sooner and tell your mom sooner rather than... Oh, that's what you were thinking? Searching longer, yeah. Oh. How long did it take the rescuers to uh, unbury you? Um, it took them about 18 to 20 minutes to get to my face. Mm -hmm. um, and then it took them, like, another 15 to 20 to get the rest of my body out of the snow. Good Lord. It was a lot of stuff. And you weren't the only person living in the house, but it seemed like the other part of the house wasn't as affected as your room. No, I was extremely fortunate mm -hmm. uh, that it didn't really affect <clears throat> the rest of the house, that the other roommates were fine, that rescue workers could focus on digging me out rather than helping other people. Mm -hmm. so. How has surviving something like this changed you? It's made me, even before this, I always kind of like lived my day, my life day to day kind of thing. And this has just really made me appreciate that even more. Like I was buried under the snow and the only regret I had before passing out was that I didn't get to pet enough dogs. Oh, wow. So my mom's like, mm, you should have thought of me. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, yeah. she's like, no, that's good. That means I, you know, you're living your life the way that you want to. This is, so it's great to, it's great in a way to look back and think, that was the only regret that I had. Yeah. But now it's like, okay, let's add more things on to right. what I want to do. So the next time this happens, I don't have Regrets. any Regrets. new ones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's next? Next, um, I'm still planning on hiking the Appalachian Trail next summer. Okay. Um, and that's really like my next big trip. So usually like I try to plan a trip like every like six months to a year. So mm -hmm. This will be a long time in the U.S. for me before a trip. That's good. I know your mom gets worried about you. So, ironically, she <laughs> when she thought she didn't have to worry, was, yeah, that's when, when the, the, biggest, the biggest thing happened. You know, this winter, I was like, let's be safe. Let's stay in the U.S. Let's not do anything too hectic or crazy. Let's mm -hmm. give her an easy winter mm -hmm. where she doesn't have to worry about me. Oh. And even she told me, she was like, I didn't really worry about you. You were in the U.S. Right, like, exactly. You're in a ski resort surrounded by other people. Yeah. And then, boom. And then... Boom, I died. Thank wow. you for coming. Well, you're here now. So. Oh, cool. Thank what you. an amazing story. Thank We're you guys for having me.